G'day my friends, Marty we're here from martysgarden.com.au now have I got a super awesome exciting show for you today because I am going out to visit a subscriber, his name's Anthony from Camden Haven Signs, he produced that sign for me up there, I've got another one to pick up, we're going to have a look at his worm farm and go over all the different levels and then we're going to tackle his straw bale garden because he's growing on this big sort of like hill and yeah it's a real struggle there so his concept is to grow above the ground and start building raised beds by straw bale gardening, similar to how I've been doing it. So we're going to go over and look at that and full breakdown on the garden. Awesome show, guys. Stay right to the end and watch the jam session. <laughs> Let's go. Marty's garden is all about compost worms, composting, farming worms indoors and out, and growing some of the most awesome food around. You can learn how by clicking the subscribe button and hitting the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Welcome world to the Marty's Garden Show. It's time to pick up my new sign and check out this new garden starter. Hey Anthony, are you home? Hey Marty, come in. Thanks mate. Oh, look at that. That looks just sick. There you go, mate. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, dude. This looks awesome. What do you reckon? Don't panic. It's organic. Well, now we've got this, right, I'm totally stoked with it. I reckon what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look at the straw bale garden that Anthony's got and his worm farm. All right, let's go, bro. Can you bring the sign down? Yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Hey Marty, come and have a look at my straw bale gardens. Yeah, I'm on my way. Wow. I saw um, in some of your posts on Facebook on this. And yeah, right. So what's what are your thoughts on this so far? Like, you got any questions for me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, started probably about three months ago with the conditioning process. Um, I probably conditioned them for a good three weeks um, with blood and bone and a uh, high a high um, fertilizer um, nitrogen sorry yeah nitrogen <clears throat> um, and then I let them sit for about a week uh, thoroughly watering them every single day but to to keep that composting process going in them um, over the last sort of week and a little bit, I have noticed that I've been getting a lot of mushrooms growing up through the bases. Yeah, the fungal activity, that's good though. It shows it's alive and that it's actually getting productive and they're feeding on the nitrogen. Yeah, and sure. breaking so, them down with a heavy nitrogen to get them going. Yep, and yeah. then I put a, a very nice layer of your your uh, home compost that you, that you sold me the other week. Yeah. So they got a nice layer on top there. And then I put a, uh, a layer of just mulch on top of that. Um, it's a little bit dry at the moment. I haven't watered them today. Yep, and it's windy, so it's drying them out. It's windy, so it's drying them all out. But overall, like the seedling, these seedlings that I put in probably two weeks ago have, um, have started growing quite well. Oh, so they've been in about two weeks. About two weeks these have been in. Yep. And what type of bales are these? Uh, these, are, these are straw bales. Right. So... Um, they're recommended not to use hay because hay's got a lot of seed in them. Yep. Whereas the straw bales don't have as much seed. But as you can see around the sides, we've got a little bit of grass growing out of them. But you know, that doesn't really worry me that much. Yeah, that's not going to hurt them. No, all. you can just pick it out. And But I, um, I have been watching uh, YouTube videos on people that have been using hay bales. Yep. Uh, and you know, the whole, the whole bale after a few weeks just turns into a big, a big grass bale really. Okay. Yeah, they just sprout and germinate grass. So you've got a yeah, capsicum. The There's a capsicum growing yep, here. Yeah, so I've got a capsicum in the middle. On either side here, we've got zucchinis. So they all get quite big. So what I'm hoping is that the zucchinis will will grow either side, and then the capsicum will will sprout up through the middle. Yep. Um, and and we'll get a little bit of sun, a little bit of light, and the zucchinis either end will do the same. Yeah. Um, zucchini leaves will shave the shade the bale as well. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to get those big leaves over the bale to stop the bale from drying out so much. Uh, in the middle, I've got a chili. Um, either side here, I've got 
Lebanese cucumbers. Yep, like cucumbers love it. All these um, kirka bits, they love going in bales. So you, they'll, they'll do really well. They're one of the best plants to go in here. And what have we got here? Uh, we've got cauliflowers on this side. Um, these have probably been in the last couple of weeks as well. Uh, as you can see, the the birds or the bugs have started eating some of the some of the leaves, which is a little bit disappointing. But what I'm going to do this weekend? Watch out for white cabbage moth lay the eggs. Yeah, in there and you'll see these little tiny green little black dots where the eggs are, and then you'll see these little green little caterpillars start up. I'm going to try. And so another question that I've got, Marty, is when I buy my seedlings, um, sometimes they're really they're really constricted and close together when I'm trying to get them out of their little seedling tubs. So uh, to avoid destroying the plants, I've planted two together quite closely because I'm just scared of when I try and rip them apart from the seedling tubs that they're in that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to kill the plants. So my question to you will be if I do plant them quite closely together like so. Uh, the root systems from each of these zucchini plants, are they going to be fighting each other for nutrients? No, they shouldn't be. They should be fine. Basically what will happen is, because you've got hundreds of seeds just in a, a seed, you know, like a, a pumpkin or a cucumber or whatever normally, and a lot of times you just like, if one's crap, you'll just basically cut one off and let the other one go and not bother about it. But they look both quite healthy. And so you can train one to go one way and train one to go the other way and they'll live together no problem. Um, you just look in the forest and stuff like that, lots of plants, lots of roots all joined together. If there's you know food around, which obviously um, in here there will be, um, you can see that there's breaking down um, inside there and they'll just get all through this and fill up this whole system. This is my worm bin. I'd like to come in and have a bit of a close look. Yeah, mate. Yeah, so you've got the mat there, the tumbleweed mat. Let's have a look at the top layer. Been running probably for about the last four months. Yeah, okay, so you've got a lot of different foods in here, some stuff that can ferment, um, that can attract certain bugs and things. As you can see, a little bit of fruit fly. Yeah, I've noticed I've got a lot of fruit fly. Yeah, I've, I've got them at my place too. It's just, they're just, you know, north coast. And so if you just dig around in there a little bit, let's see what we got. Yeah, okay. So the worms are coming up and eating this. You know, you've got a bit of bug action, but it's not over the top. There's no, you know, it's not too dry where you're bringing cockroaches and, you know, it looks like it's moist enough. They look happy enough. I, what I would do, though, is I wouldn't feed for a while. Yeah, sure. I would actually just leave that there, what's there, and just start putting in, like, a bit of, like, leaf litter or um, a bit of sort of, like, sugar cane or some type of mulchy sort of thing or just more paper yep sure yeah just a carbon add, add more of a carbon element to it just to slow down the, that some of that bug population what about sawdust can i add a bit of sawdust yeah yeah, yeah. as long as it's um, going to suck in the moisture and it's not chemicals in it go easy on the bread that'll bring cockroaches and stuff in every now and again it's okay so i would just calm down on the food for a little bit let's have a look look at the next layer so the the worms will be probably poking out the bottom but they should go back up, and it gets pretty heavy, right? So you can see underneath, yeah, there's not too many. And so, like, look, basically, if you see my, saw my last video, that's that's ready to go. Awesome. Yeah, like, that's probably almost gone, like, nearly sort of, like, too far. But if you put in, like, a clay ball like that, it won't go any further than that. There's nothing left for them to eat in there. So you put that one back down, and the next one's going to be even heavier. Unless you want to put that on the ground because there wasn't a lot sticking out. Yeah, cool. And that way you won't bust your ass because it gets really heavy. It holds like 80% moisture. And the second one, because you've put something in the food in the bottom, it's going to suck down on it. So we need to... I haven't had this layer off okay. since I started. It's going to be just like the top one. It's going to be a, a oh, few no. friends in there. Here we go. That's interesting. Let's have a look at that. They've all, for some reason, worm balling just in that corner there. There's got to be a bit of food there or something. And so, you know, you've got this cone that's going up, so they're going to go up and down. I'm going to grab that like that. Oh, it feels so weird when they're in our ha in the hands. So I'd be putting some carbon down in there. Have you got any straw or anything like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, put a little bit of straw down um, in the bottom. So they can climb up the uh, dome. Yeah, and sort of like up the edges because they'll have a bit of trouble going up and down. And we'll put this back on top of there 
and um, yeah, they're worm boiling there. We can drop that down for now. I put sugar cane in the bottom sometimes. You don't have to, but um, and also you need some type of little bucket down there on the tap. Is the tap open? Uh, yeah, the tap's open because I have a, the, the tap dripping into a uh, watering container. Okay. So we got the. Yeah. We just, just we moved the farm, so that's. I just normally have like a little watering container, and I sit it up underneath there, and it collects all the the worm tea that comes out. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it's look overall, it's a pretty good farm, and you've got a lot of castings there ready to go. So let's just um, get this back together, so they're all nice and happy. And throw that. Yeah. Throw them onto the top layer there. Throw these. Yeah. Under the top. Yeah. Because I'll get you know to get them squished. And we'll put the farm back together and so it's a good spot here like it's out of the sun uh, it's coming into summer now so if you want to have a cool spot so yeah i'll be overall i'll be you know fairly happy with that yeah, i'm just, pretty happy with my first effort yeah so you just need to that bottom one would have been cocoa peat all in there right yeah it was just the starter kit that i bought yeah the starter kits have the cocoa peat so that they've eaten all through that cocoa peat inside there and whatever food that you've given them so um, yeah, you're going to have a pretty high quality worm casting there, mate. I'll be overall, I'll be happy. Awesome. You just need to put more bedding in yep. when you um, take the castings back out. Yeah, fantastic. So, mate, you said something about your father. My uh, father had been growing vegetables in our backyard veggie garden for the best part of my entire life, and some. I can honestly say that we never really used to go to the fruit and veggie shop on the weekends because dad used to have everything in his back garden from zucchinis to strawberries, lettuces, uh, mango trees, lime trees, you know, I, I could probably sit here all day and, and, and tell wow. you, but it'd take me forever to go through everything. But He's yeah. very good at what he did then. So <clears throat> Italian? Yeah, Italian heritage and my father's name's Mario. Mario. So, you know, don't get too much more Italian than that. Awesome. Um, since we moved into Kendall about two years ago, <clears throat> I've been a bit slack and I've been feeling really guilty that we haven't really been growing much. Um, and it really eats me every time we go to Woolies or we go to Coles and we're walking down the fresh produce aisle and we have to buy salad packs and fruit and vegetables, etc, etc. And I understand we'll probably never really eradicate the, the, um, the whole not having to buy from, from Coles and Woolies and from our produce stores. But, you know, we can grow, try and grow as much as we can to try and eliminate that as much of that as possible. So this year I've, uh, I've got my straw bales in, I've got my raised garden beds, and I'll try the best that we can to, to try and grow as much as we can, uh, try and live up to my father's name. Unreal. So the straw bales, worm farming, it's all a good start, mate. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks, mate. Mate. Give me a high five, brother. You. <laughs> right. Thanks Eves for uh, inviting me here. Oh, you're very welcome mate, it's been a pleasure to have you. Uh, you're welcome anytime. Um... Unreal, and I love that sign, don't panic, it's organic. I'm sure it's going to get lots of comments down below. Fantastic, thanks very much right. mate. This is off for the song. So how much fun was that, guys? That was just awesome. I didn't even know that he played guitar like that. Like, yeah, I've got to sing a few songs, a few tunes together. We just sort of like cranked that out straight away on the spot. Who knows, maybe we'll come up with an even better song in the future. Look, if you're loving the Marty's Garden Show, you're learning a lot, and you're just really digging, coming and watching the videos, make sure you subscribe before you go by hitting that bell button as well. And that way you'll get notified every time a new video comes out. Lots more about worm farming, growing organic food at home, and enjoying life. Have a great day. Happy gardening. We'll see you at the next video real soon. Bye for now.